Hey everybody, this is Andy from Drakenstone, also known as the Dungeon Artist, and with me on uh, my video today is Matthew McIntyre. Welcome, Matthew. Hey, thanks a lot for having me. Hey, this is fun. So I finally get to meet you in person. You're the person that designed the cover of my uh, latest book. Mm -hmm. um, just wanted to show it off a little bit and give a sneak preview to this book that's coming up and going to be launched this summer. That's called The Mask of Deception. I'm going to go ahead and hit my screen share. And um, I'm going to show off the picture and we can talk a little bit about it. Sounds good. And so here's the picture. And wow, I'm just so impressed. Um, Thank you. Tell me about how did you learn to, to make art like this? Uh, man, it, it's mostly through doing art mentorships with various artists. Uh, I've learned under artists like Todd Lockwood, who if you know Dungeons and Dragons, pretty much know his art pretty well. Oh yeah. Uh, also has done a lot of artwork for uh, Magic the Gathering. I also learned under Dan Dos Santos, who has also done a lot of artwork for Magic. Oh, tons of other uh, fantasy novels as well. And the main artist that I learned under, Donato Giancola. And he's uh, probably had the biggest influence on my work. So a lot of learning from very, very good artists who are also very good teachers too. That sounds great. I used to watch drawing shows when I was a kid, you know, mm -hmm. and then when I was about nine, I gave up, you know, <laughs> so it sounds like yeah. you really stuck with it. Yeah, it was uh, probably one of the people who used to watch was Bob Ross. He oh, yeah. has, a, has a saying that I really like that talent is a pursued interest. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just never stopped. How about Commander Mark in the Secret City or Imagination Station? Ah, no, I actually <laughs> haven't really watched too many artists other than, you know, now oh, there's a lot of professional artists putting out tutorials and stuff, and I watch right. a lot of those. Cool. Well, let's talk a little bit about the picture. So the main protagonist in the story is called Norgan, and he has this mask, and it's basically stuck to his face. I say you pretty much nailed it on the mask. And then oh, thank he, you. he also has this hammer that's glowing. The hammer is like the ring in the Lord of the Rings. It's a character in the story. Mm -hmm. um, it has motivations and so on. And then, wow, you really nailed it on this fireball. Look at that, everybody, in his hand. It's just poof, fire coming right out of his hand there. Yeah, I, I don't tend to paint fire so in your face usually so that was both a challenge and also a lot of fun cool okay so anyway uh we'll keep secret what happens to norgan at the end of the story but this is what the book looks like and um i'm gonna be excited to um to launch that this summer mick is helping me my friend mick is gonna help me um format the PDF and launch it on Amazon books. Um, there's some other um, kind of black and white artwork on the inside. And I want to give a shout out to um, my wife, Angela, who did uh, the interior um, line, black and white um, line art for the inside. Oh, really? She did that? Yeah. So nice. with, uh, you know, pencil and paper. So that one's not digital. Mm hmm. Cool. So tell me about um, what would a person want to do if they wanted to have a commission done with some of your artwork for a, a book or a project? What would they do? Well, all they would really need to do is uh, send me an email at mrmcintyre at outlook.com. That's on my website, matthewmcintyre.com. And uh, really just need to send me an email with the idea and uh, what they want out of it, what it's for, and uh, things like that. And generally pretty easy to work it out. Cool. So tell me some of the um, commissioned artwork you've done. So I mentioned before Mick McCart and his uh, Unremembered Realms. Uh, you're on, what, the fourth book cover for that one now? Oh, geez. It's it's hard to remember. I think the fourth main entry in the Journal of an Outlaw, I believe I've done five book covers and a couple of board game box arts for him 
mm -hmm. uh, a few character illustrations that are also used for promotionals. Uh, I've done some illustrations for a gladiator card game before, which was a lot of fun. I think that's still in early access. And uh, I've got an upcoming uh, commission work that I'm doing for a book that is adjacent to uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Okay. So I do a whole lot of work, mix of fantasy, sci-fi, and now also getting into some military fantasy. That's cool. So you've done board games, um, book covers. Uh, what's the most craziest piece of artwork you've ever done? <laughs> oh, man. I guess overall the crazy piece of artwork, not necessarily a commissioned one, I did this big Warhammer 40,000 uh, piece that had, I consider it the craziest one I've done because it has, I think, 44 characters in it. Wow. And that's, at that point, it was more figures to paint than it was uh, the, the entire setting. <laughs> like most of it was just characters. At least you didn't have 44,000 characters to draw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In a way, that might have been easier. <laughs> cool. All right. So um, to all the people that follow Drake and Stone out there, definitely check out Matthew McIntyre's artwork. I mean, I would totally recommend it if you have a book, a board game, any kind of project that needs fantasy art. But, you know, as you heard him say, he does sci-fi and other genres, too. Um, and so you'll have to watch for that book that's coming out this summer. It's called... The Mask of Deception, and Matthew did the cover for that. And I uh, can't wait to launch it on my website. Right now on my website, I've got this. Uh, I wanted to show you this, Matthew. These are some of the things I've been building in miniature, okay? All right. So ready for a close-up. Camera, vents, shalt be lower. <laughs> Look at this uh, table I set up before our call started. Oh, so, nice. I've got this, uh, this is called the Great Library, and it's a modular building. And it oh, has, I love that. You know, the roof and different levels, and they totally stack up together and kind of, uh, they have little posts that allow them to line up perfectly. Psh, once it lines up perfectly, it's not going to move on you. Oh, that's and, great. Um, so you can build it as many levels tall as you want. Right now I've got three stories. And this stuff's kind of unbreakable. And it just comes out whatever color you want. I chose black. Um, but I think it looks great just right off the printer. I mean, I didn't do anything to it. This is just right off the printer. Really? That um, does look nice. Yeah, I could. That's that seems like that would be great for just tabletop gaming, but also for artists for that would be great for reference photos for like big cathedrals and things like that if, since you can stack them however you want yeah you can I might change, have to get my hand on yeah, you can change the layout of it because it's totally modular each piece just comes off and can go somewhere else so you can set it up however you like um oh wow and then these are the other kind of flat terrain i'm making just to make a more of a two-dimensional space and they have little magnets inside that oh, wow. the magnets are embedded underneath the surface. And so they snap together. And so That's once great. they're on the table, they don't go all wonky. Um, so I've got a little city going here. I thought it would show off, but here are some of the buildings. And there are some uh, strange uh, growths coming over here. This is like my sci-fi part of it. I've got some cannons. Can't see the cannon. Here we go. We got these pools that are just different colors. That one's blood. This one is basically blue. Um, and I'm off the camera right now, but I've uh, got these other stackable ones that I wanted to show off because they're the ones that have my glow in the dark pools. They glow in the dark a, too. This one is uh, glow in the dark, baby. So when you turn the lights off, those pools, they shine and glow. So um, your cool. characters will wonder what's in there. Like, do you want to do you want to go in there or not? It's glowing. <laughs> <laughs> so that I build all great. this kind of stuff, you know, 
in my spare time and um, I sell it on my website and it's a fun hobby but lots of people are getting into it so I'm able to sell all these different pieces that I'm making like all these pieces the reason I have them out is because I'm getting ready to ship them they're sold oh um, geez. So I can't nice. make these fast enough no kidding um, so it take takes me like 16 hours to print that and so this is like 32 pieces so it takes me a month oh geez. to print this big long building you know mm -hmm. gonna have <laughs> to get more printers <laughs> yeah i've only got uh three different ones running right now but i should definitely get some more yeah those are great that's i know that one of the one of the biggest kind of clients that you can get is just a non-industry artists uh, or i guess non-industry clients are people who just want things like they want to bring their dnd campaign uh to life with illustrations of their characters and things like that so bring, being able to bring in thing like creative aspects into a tabletop game is 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 that's so big for them you're able to bring the environments to life mm -hmm. and personally i love the that a uh, gothic architecture aesthetic that you've got going on with the library there so i might have to look into getting some uh set pieces myself that's cool so let me ask you one more question you mentioned making characters for a D, &D campaign mm -hmm. so what if someone wants to get their character sketch or their character portrait i mean what's the lowest um what if they just want one character portrait what would they do uh, if they want one character portrait, then I do uh, do a reduced price on just individual characters. If uh, I have, I can't remember. I do actually have some examples on my website of some uh, of three Warhammer Inquisitors, just a character or portrait on a white background. So it's a great way to get just the feel and design of a character out without having to necessarily go into a huge uh, painting so it's cheaper and faster than my usual work so i definitely take those kinds of commissions and if you want one of those then just message me about that specifically that sounds great um i always tried to do my character sketches myself mm -hmm. but uh they never came out <laughs> they were always terrible well but it's it's hard to make a drawing of something you care about too because mm -hmm. you're always going to see the flaws in it and it feels like you can never get your own characters just right right but it just adds so much to have that visual element i mean when the mm -hmm. when the picture is just helping to have you visualize what's happening uh that's magic so right that's one of the things i love about doing uh fantasy artwork specifically and especially artwork for self-published uh writers or people publishing through amazon is it lets you get their ideas out into a more visual aspect and that's really kind of rewarding for me sounds good all right well i'm afraid we're out of time but i'm andy schiller from drake and stone and we've been talking with matthew mcintyre who's an independent artist and has done my latest book cover matthew thanks for joining us today and thanks a lot for having me the book sounds like it'll be really really good I can't wait to have everybody read it. Um, so thanks again to Matthew. And if you want to hire him to do a commission, check the links below. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks a lot.